Hi, everyone. Pastor Joe Persh with you for another Pastor's Connection. So glad to be able to share the middle of your week with the inspiration of the Word of God. We are going through a study of the names of God, not all of them, but many of the principal names of God. And we've come into a section now where we're talking a lot about the titles and names given to the Lord Jesus Christ specifically. And, uh, you know, some of the names that we find in Scripture particularly the names that are attributed to Christ, uh, they, they draw from images that we understand as in, in our realm of life. Uh, images like the Lion of Judah or Christ's title as the Lamb of God. Even a title like Christ as the bright and morning, the bright morning star. Uh, these are all dra drawn from our experience of majesty and beauty and innocence and purity. And, and I think one of the reasons the, the Trinity elected to, to give those names uh, to us to understand God by was because the immensity of God is so great that it is essentially impossible to describe him. Think about it. He's, he's eternal. He's perfection beyond perfection. And there's no way you can capture in any description of who he is all of who he is. And, and his immensity is so separate from us that he has been so kind to give us terms of familiarity to bring the immensity into a frame of mind that we can understand it. And so you have names like the Lamb of God. Well, there's a title today that we're going to use to, in our study of Christ's, uh, Christ's identity that is one of those titles drawn from images of everyday life. But it's one that is uh, remarkable. It's not used much of Christ, but it is immense in its truth about Jesus. And it's also so impactful that I bet that this name, if you truly understood it, could change how you wake up tomorrow. Now, isn't that a tr an intriguing thought? It could literally change how you face each day as you walk with God. So what is the name? Well, it's the name or the title of Jesus as the Cornerstone the cornerstone. And right away, you see, that's not a frequently used title if, if you know your Bible well, but it is precious nonetheless. And so we always answer three questions in our time together. First of all, what does the particular name we're studying mean? Now, a cornerstone is, is an image or a title drawn from the, the world of construction, the construction of large buildings. In the ancient past, in Christ's time, and in the Old Testament era, and in the New Testament era, you know that most buildings of, of, of any size were made out of stone. Stones lined up at perfect angles and topped them one on top of the other so that you had these massive edifices. And when a, a stone building was constructed at that time, and if you go downtown today, you'll still see stone buildings from, from the recent past constructed this way. The first stone that was laid on the foundation was a corner stone. It was set at the, at the corner, and it was cut in such a way that it gave perfect lines for the stones that were to meet it from either direction of the corner. The corner stone. It held the two lines of length and width of the building in place. And so the whole building was built out from the lines and the perfect setting of that cornerstone. In fact, the cornerstone dictated all the lines of the building, not just length, not just width, but height. The perfection of the building depended on the perfection of the cornerstone. It had to be perfectly shaped, and it had to be immensely strong to take the gathered pressure of all the linear forces of that building. Now, the Bible calls Jesus the cornerstone of the church. We, the Bible calls us as God's people, God's believing people. It calls us in 1 Corinthians 3, God's building. We are being built together according to 1 Peter chapter 1 as a temple of living stones of which Christ Jesus is the cornerstone. It's a beautiful image of God's believing people being built into a, a marvelous temple of worship. And Jesus is the cornerstone. That's the scriptural description. Uh, you know, by the way, cornerstones often had names etched on the outside to, to show 
the dedication of the building or maybe even what was placed in the cornerstone as a time capsule. And the cornerstone of the body of Christ would read this way, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our cornerstone. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, now let's answer the second question. Where do we find it in Scripture? Multiple places. Luke chapter 20, for instance, Jesus identified himself indirectly as the cornerstone of the future believing body of Christ. The Jews were opposing him like usual. He was defending himself like usual. And at one point in Luke 20, verse 13, he, uh, he basically tells them that uh, they have rejected him. And in verse 17, he looked directly at them and he said, What then is, is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. They were rejecting him. He told them as they were rejecting him, they were rejecting him as the cornerstone of all that God was really doing. And so he identifies himself indirectly as the cornerstone, doesn't he? It gets a little bit clearer in Acts chapter 4. Months later, after Jesus had been crucified, risen, and appeared to many, and ascended into heaven, Peter was preaching the risen Jesus in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 4, and he was speaking before the Pharisees once again, the Sanhedrin, the council of leaders that were still resisting the gospel and resisting the identity of Jesus as God's Son, the Messiah. And in Acts chapter 4, Peter opposes them. And he says in verse 11, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There he is in Scripture, defined as the cornerstone of all who would truly believe, the building of believers, the future temple of God. Peter goes on and says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Very important warning. If you reject Jesus as the cornerstone of what God is doing in the world, you're rejecting your only path to salvation. That's why just believing in a generic God, one you could pick off the grocery store belief, uh, a grocery store shelf of belief is not enough to be saved. You must come all the way to seeing Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the only God, the saving God, the cornerstone of all that we believe. You must come all the way to Christ. Finally, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, there's an interesting description where Paul talks about the believers as the body of Christ and the building of God. And he says in 1 Corinthians that no one can lay a foundation, this is 1 Corinthians 3.11, other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Again, obliquely referring to Christ as the cornerstone who sets everything in place in the body of Christ, the building of God. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, or precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. He's talking there directly to pastors about what they build on the foundation that Jesus laid of the church of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, don't you preach out of your own mind. Don't you act out of your own flesh and your own strength. That's wood, hay, and stubble. That will build nothing of eternal value. You trust the Holy Spirit to work through you. You trust the Word of God to build up the church. Don't bring anything of you into it. Let God build His church through you and through the Word of God, and He'll build it with gold and silver and precious stones that will stand the heat when He judges you at the great judgment seat of Christ in eternity future, and what you have done in your church will last. Now, that's important to pastors like me, but it also translates to individual believers because God has given you a life to build for him, a life for his glory, a life that you must build on by faith, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to obey him and do something with the life that he's given you. And that's why I come to the last question and I bring it around to what I initially said in the beginning, that knowing that he's the cornerstone and you have to build your life on him, should change the way you wake up every morning. Because you see, you, you can't build an eternally effective life unless you're lined up with the cornerstone. Not just at salvation, 
but in every waking day of your life of serving him until you see him. And so how would that affect the way you wake up in the morning? Why does this all matter is our last question. Well, if you know that Jesus is the cornerstone, you've believed in him for salvation, you've now been placed into the temple of God, you are a living stone placed there, you want to reflect his glory as much as you can throughout your life and build a life that reflects his glory so that you can present it to him. So here's the question you and I ought to ask every morning as we wake up. Lord, will my thoughts and my actions today be lined up with the cornerstone? I just thought that's a great way for me to look at how to live in response to his mercies and his authority. Lord, as I move through my day, will my thoughts and my actions be lined up with you, the cornerstone? That was a powerful conviction that came on my heart about living for him every day. Maybe you can take that with you, and it really will change the way you wake up in the morning and the way you walk through your day. Let's pray to the great cornerstone right now for a moment. Bow with me. Lord Jesus, we come to you and thank you that the Bible says you're not only the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end of all things, not only are you the creator of all things, but you're the only Savior, and you're the builder of the church, and you yourself are the cornerstone that's been laid so that Everyone who comes to belief comes through the cornerstone of Christ, through the cornerstone of your gospel. And then everyone who grows and gives you glory until you come does that by lining their lives up to the angles of the cornerstone and taking their direction from you. Lord, give us the ability to do that even today, even when it may be challenging, Lord, for there's a reward in the keeping of your call. Give us your strength today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for lining yourself up with the Cornerstone with me today. I'll check in with you again, God willing, next week.